All right, we're going to begin by taking a look at uh, reviewing mitosis. Some of you in this second half of biology maybe haven't had biology since trimester one, if this is um, in trimester three right now. So it uh, is worth to have a little review, plus with all the days we've lost, it never hurts to review anyway. So as we review mitosis, I want to um, just kind of get us started here in mitosis you're going to have, let's just have a cell, and we're going to have a red chromosome in there, and we're going to have uh, blue. All right, so in mitosis, the whole goal of mitosis is to divide this cell into two, and in the process of dividing it, make sure that um, your cells are identical. We want to make identical cells. So this would be metaphase right here as a review. Metaphase is when the chromosomes are lined up right down the center of the cell. So they're kind of lined up here right down the center. And then what's going to happen is in the next phase we're going to have anaphase. And anaphase is when the chromosome splits and it splits at a very specific point called the centromere. Uh, so there was a kind of a centromere there holding the two halves together and that's now uh, gone. So we have half of the chromosome getting pulled this way and we have half of the chromosome getting split uh, going toward the opposite pole and then of course we also have that for our uh, second chromosome there and that is again that is anaphase, when the chromosomes are moving to opposite poles. And then the very last phase, um, to kind of finish, uh, finish off a picture anyway, we have telophase and cytokinesis. Now these usually happen together at the same time, so a lot of the times they get put together. Cytokinesis is when the cytoplasm actually splits, and you can see because I already have drawn two separate cells that our cytoplasm has indeed split in half. Um, but telophase is also when the um, chromosomes that we have over here, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and, and draw them as full chromosomes. Um, now that we've completely, you know, moved them from one side to the other, uh, these are going to, you know, we'll have a nucleus around them again, and they'll kind of go back into their chromatin form, all you know, squiggly, it won't be in a condensed chromosome, it won't be visible. Uh, so this is mitosis. We started out with two chromosomes in this first cell, and as we went through this process and we finished, we have two chromosomes, one, two, we have two chromosomes, one and two, in this cell. And they're also identical, so we have the red one, the other half of the red one, the blue one, the other half of the blue one. So that's mitosis. And all of your cells, um, except for one, will go through this process at some point in time. Now to continue on with review, the number of chromosomes that you start with is going to equal what you have at the very end. So again, on our previous picture, we started with two, and each of our cells ended with two. Uh, we also have two cells that are created in this process and they're identical to each other and they're also identical to the parent so the parent cell uh, same as the ending and the types of cells that go through mitosis are called somatic somatic cells are all of your cells except for your the sperm or your egg cells which are used in reproduction all other cells are called somatic so that would be skin cells and brain cells cells for your heart and your lungs and your stomach and all sorts, you know, everything else. Now why do we need to do mitosis? Why do we need to learn this? Well, mitosis is how our bodies grow and how they add more cells. So you can all look back at a baby picture. You were definitely smaller than you are today. So you have grown through the course of your lifetime because your body has done mitosis and has added to the number of cells that you, you know, that make up who you are. And this is also how we replace um, lost cells. When we lose them, like skin cells um, kind of flake off, okay, they get dry, they break off. Um, when you get cuts, you have to replace those cells that are, are broken or damaged and you have to kind of fill in 
the um, empty area there that's been created because of, of that cut. So mitosis is important for all of those reasons. Now, that was supposed to be in the first half of biology. I want to review it though because in meiosis, which we're going to be studying um, at the beginning here of this trimester, is has some similarities to mitosis. So today is a lot of vocabulary and I'm sorry for that, but we will get into practicing and then using this vocabulary which will hopefully uh, help us memorize and learn it. As we get into um, meiosis, we're getting more into genetics and heredity is your transmission of traits. When you pass on your traits to your children someday, they have inherited from you certain characteristics. So that is heredity, when you transmit your traits to the next generation. And of course there's variation among offspring. So I have, um, I'm one of three children personally, and we all are different. My brother is a whole head taller than I am. I have blue eyes, my siblings have brown. So there's variation among siblings. And even if you're an only child, I'm sorry, but there would be variation among you if you had you know, a brother or a sister. Uh, and that's because of the traits that your parents have passed on to you and their parents before them. And when we get into genetics, we're going to be studying heredity. And we're going to be studying these traits and how they're transmitted and why you get blue eyes or why you get brown hair and, and so on. As far as how our genes are inherited, a gene is a code of information that um, forms your heredity. So you have genes for height and genes for hair color and eye color and genes that you know form all sorts of characteristics that make you who you are and a gene is a segment of DNA, a piece of DNA and there's a lot of genes on one um, you know particular strand of, of DNA um, so you have lots of genes and then let's just talk about some cells. Reproductive cells are the ones that go through meiosis and so we just mentioned somatic cells um, as being the ones that do mitosis so there's a difference already but gametes are your reproductive cells so for males that would be sperm cells and for females that would be egg cells and they're very different the egg cell is rather large where the sperm cell is smaller and it also has a tail to it so that it can swim and your parents are going to pass these genes onto you through these reproductive cells. For humans, a reproductive cell is going to contain 23 chromosomes. So if you think of 23 here in mom's egg and 23 uh, chromosomes in dad's sperm cell, total when these two combine, you as a new life, a new human being, would have 46 total chromosomes. Now there are two types of reproduction. This is one of the characteristics all living things have to reproduce or their species would go extinct. There's asexual reproduction and this involves just a single parent passing on um, all of their traits. An example of that would be a hydra. This is an underwater creature and you can see right here in the picture um, that this has a bud on it. So this is called budding, this type of reproduction. and this is mitosis. This is the way it reproduces. It has all the exact same DNA as the original parent and so we would call this a clone. Anything that goes through asexual reproduction is pretty much a clone of its parent. Identically um, same characteristics in all aspects. But you and I reproduce sexually and so that involves two different parents not a single parent and it gives um, some unique combinations because each parent has their own set of chromosomes uh, that you can inherit from those parents. So even though you might have a sibling, your chromosomes can be very genetically different um, even though you have the same two sets of parents. So this would be sexual reproduction. Now you don't have the budding. This is one parent, the egg versus, you know, from the other parent. And so this is sexual reproduction. And the offspring are going to vary genetically whereas in asexual reproduction with that hydra, it is identical to the parent. You are not identical to your parents. You might have some similarities, but you're going to have um, lots of differences as well. Moving on, looking at chromosomes in a human cell. 
Well, somatic cells, we know, are all of your cells other than your gametes, and we know that those have 46 chromosomes, 23 from mom and 23 from dad. And in a somatic cell, we also have these homologous chromosomes. Now, homologous means that you have two chromosomes that make up a pair. So in our 46 chromosomes, we have 23 pairs to get that 46. You have a chromosome from dad and a chromosome from mom that are going to be similar. Maybe both of these code for hair color. So dad's information is given to you and mom's information is given to you about hair color. And it's a combination of what's on these chromosomes, what's in that DNA that is going to um, tell us what hair color then you end up having. And the genes are controlled. Uh, genes are the controlling factor here. So you may have a gene for brown hair from dad, but a gene for blonde hair from mom. So when we get into human genetics, we'll look at, well, do you get brown hair, do you get blonde hair, or do you get maybe kind of a, a lighter brown, a, a shade difference. So those are homologous chromosomes when you have the, the chromosome from mom and the chromosome from dad that are giving you um, similar gene information. Let's take a look then at sex chromosomes. A few slides left to finish this video off. There are um, obviously two genders, male and female, and the sex chromosomes for a female, we have XX, and for a male, XY. Now when we get into genetics, and actually it's some Punnett squares, we will come back and we will do quite a bit more with these sex chromosomes. And all of your other chromosomes, because if you count here, females, you have two sex chromosomes, well, you have a total of 46 total, so if only two of them determine your gender, that must mean that you have 44 other chromosomes, and those others are called autosomes. Males, same for you. You have two gender chromosomes, an X and a Y. That means you have 44 autosomes. Now, we can take a picture of all your chromosomes, and you can see the 23 pairs down here, from 1 to 23. And these are your sex chromosomes, so this would be a a male in this picture because they have an X which is the larger chromosome and then this Y chromosome and so that would be a male and you can see that if we were to count all of these other 1 through 22 pairs you would have 44 autosomes and just the two sex chromosomes. Now as far as um, the types of cells, we know we have somatic and gamete, but we also have some vocabulary to help us represent those as well. So we have what we call a diploid cell. Notice the prefix di, that's going to mean two. So any cell with two chromosome sets, and that would be, so here's our two sets, and you have 46 total. So one set is 23 and 2 times 23 gives you the 46 total and these again are our somatic cells. These are all diploid having the full two sets of chromosomes and then we have haploid which sounds like half. So haploids only have a single set and that would be 23 and you can find haploid cells um, your sperm and your egg. So here's if, if the total number of chromosomes in this individual is 2 then the egg has half, which is one, and the sperm has half, which is one. And together, when those do combine, this new offspring will have the full two chromosomes, um, the two sets. Last slide, we keep mentioning how these chromosomes combine, or the egg and the sperm combine, and we call that fertilization. Fertilization is when the haploid, so the half sperm, combines with the half egg, so now we have our 23 and our 23 chromosomes matching together to get 46. And you can see that here, all the chromosomes in the sperm and the egg combining. And now we have the little um, two, we have a total of 46 chromosomes then within our fertilized egg. A zygote is what we call that fertilized egg and it is diploid. So it has the full two sets, one set from mom, one set from dad. Um, to make it a, a full living human being with all the information needed to grow and develop.